here we are with Rogue Media Gaming outside of the Microsoft Theater at E3 in beautiful sunny Los Angeles. Uh, yesterday was the big event as far as pre-shows. Uh, we had Microsoft and Bethesda going yesterday. Yep. Um, right now we're going to talk a little bit about Microsoft's press conference. Uh, the first thing was the big show of Halo Infinite. So what do you think about that? Halo Infinite hopefully will be a bigger, better version than Halo 5. Focus more on Master Chief, not so much on the other team that was really divisive of the Xbox community. Back to the basics, hopefully great shooting, great multiplayer, everything that makes Halo, Halo. I'm guessing it's going to be online all the time, uh, almost like an MMO style thing. The, I think that title, Infinite, just lends really well to that. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what comes out of that. Yep. Um, also, three new Gears of War properties. Uh, they started with the teaser with the Funko Pops, which was really cute. Um, and I know we're both avid collectors of Funko Pops. Uh, what do you think about them getting into mobile gaming? Well, again, the Gears franchise, the probably marquee franchise for Xbox behind Halo, uh, Pops, the number one pop collectible right now. Absolutely. So mashing up of those two things makes some level of sense to me, although I am curious about what the gameplay is going to be like, if it's going to be a tactic style game or something more akin to a Lego game where certain characters have certain abilities that can only access certain areas, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that looks great. Fallout Tactics. XCOM like Fallout or Xbox, uh, sorry, uh, XCOM like Gears game, uh, yeah. which I think is going to be amazing. Uh, I think it, that world really lends itself to that. And Gears Five, um, obviously Gears Four was also divisive from from them. Uh, you could only play two player. Uh, couldn't do the four player co op, which a lot of us really enjoyed. Story was was okay. Moving it forward into the future, so we'll see what that franchise brings us in the future. Yeah, I know I'm personally really excited about the Gears Tactics game. Uh, I've never been a heavy first-person shooter uh, player, but I really love the uh, XCOM franchise. So if they go that route, um, but with the intellectual property of Gears, I, I think there could be a lot of fun there uh, for a whole different group of players, which I think is what they're trying to do, right? Sure. They want to get more people into Gears by expanding the universe a little yeah. bit. Um, we also uh, got to see... Uh, some new stuff with Xbox Game Pass, uh, specifically a lot of titles coming out on release day um, and the change of downloading two times faster and using AI to speed up downloads, which seems pretty exciting. Uh, but what do you think about all those titles coming out like right off the bat on their release day? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting move, again, with Xbox being number two in the, the console market. How do you get those games into gamers' hands faster with maybe even less of an investment? Game Pass, uh, really inexpensive as opposed to buying a $60 retail game. And you get to try it really before you buy it. So if you don't like it, you've only spent $9, nine dollars nine ninety nine a month on that Game Pass. Uh, makes getting in... Uh, that much better. Also, Game Pass playable on Windows 10. So you can play all of those Xbox games on your PC if you're a PC gamer. Expands that market a little bit, gets you off kind of the main hub of what PC gaming is, mm -hmm. um, and opens up you know those Xbox games to all sorts of new uh, customers. Yeah, I am definitely excited about the changes to, to Game Pass. Uh, with all those first-person titles coming out, release day, I just that excites me. It gets me to want to actually buy uh, the, the Game Pass, which I've held off uh, thus far on. Um, we also saw some gameplay of Forza Horizon 4 uh, online all the time. Uh, racing game, interaction with friends. It looks like a lot of different modes, uh, all in 4K, which I'm absolutely excited about. Right. That'll be a fun thing to play in the home theater. Uh, what are you excited for with the Forza franchise? Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge Forza guy, I'm not a racing guy, but that game looks amazing. Car models, uh, just from the gameplay trailer that we saw, looked as spot on as you can do. Uh, high quality 4K graphics like you mentioned. The open world thing should be interesting, uh, racing against you know, kind of in an MMO style. You see people racing races as you're driving down the road. 
collision avoidance, that kind of thing should be interesting uh, to see if <laughs> someone's coming at you and you're coming at them, and do you just pass through, or do you, you know, or do you actually collide with with people in the world? So that that's kind of interesting. Um, games are huge; they have a huge following. So again, not a big surprise on the first party front, but you know, it looks really great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to wrecking a lot of cars because that's probably <laughs> what I'll be good at. Um, we also saw Dying Light 2. I think the most the thing I was most excited for was that as you do things in the world, it changes the world. It changes how the world reacts with you, which we've seen in a few different games. Uh, this one looked like it might go a little bit further than some of those games as far as the decisions you make and, and what they cause in the world. Um, aside from that aspect, which I know you're also excited about, uh, what makes you excited about the sequel to Dying Light? Uh, uh, Dying Light, a game that I think has been rumored for a long time, the sequel to that, Again, I agree. It's the that open kind of chain. You make a you make a, a decision. It cascades throughout the rest of the game. My actually big concern about that is is that all funneling you towards one or two final choices, right? Mm -hmm. How do we get to the end game? Because yeah. that infinite amount of choices, it's a lot of game to build. Uh, but it looks great. The parkour aspect very much reminds me of uh, some of the Xbox titles that that follow in that same la uh, lane. Uh, you know what happens during the day basic kind of open world but what happens at night is that survival aspect how do you how do you stay away from 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 the zombies and the bad things in the world cool we saw a couple sea of thieves expansions teased uh i personally haven't played uh, sea of thieves but i'm interested in the pirates and seeing a lot of undead it looks like with this new like darker world mm -hmm. um is there anything you're excited for with sea of thieves i haven't tried it either uh mainly for the same reasons that's the the base game didn't get a a great response i think there's a passionate fan base great that they're showing continual uh dlc drops content drops to keep that live um the the graphics and stuff looked amazing. I know that the, the big thing is the water in that game is unlike any water you've ever seen in a video game. So, you know, this may be the thing that pulls me in. The best thing I know is you have to have a crew. So I got to get three or four other like-minded folks to jump into that game with me, experience that world. Because playing single player, that could be, it could be a little detrimental to the progress that you can make at that game. Yeah. Uh, we saw a teaser uh, for Cyberpunk 2077, yes. which I am over the moon to see being a big fan of the witcher franchise uh it looked you know it, of course it has that futuristic feel to it it reminded me a little bit of, of grand theft auto like maybe they're going down a futuristic <laughs> grand theft auto kind of kind of feel uh, what, what do you think where do you think they're headed i have no idea that game looked like grand theft auto mary's blade runner with a little bit of that witcher flavor of that deep immersive world that you're going to get lost in for two three hundred hours more like more than likely um, really excited about that game i love the witcher uh, mm -hmm. i spent hundreds and hundreds of hours in that world so interesting to see what project red uh, brings us in the future for that cool uh, along with one of the biggest announcements i think of the night was they acquired five new studios into the Microsoft Studios. Uh, the biggest announcement coming out of that, I would say, was Devil May Cry 5, mm -hmm. which I have to say looked amazing. Um, I, I, that looks like the kind of action game that you just you, you want to play. You, you want, it's fast, it's, it's furious, it's crazy and over the top. Uh, wh what do you think is, is going to be the sell there? Uh, I mean, Devil May Cry typically has been a PlayStation-driven title. It's got that kind of Japanese feel to it, so definitely more something you would see on the PS4, PS3. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it looks great. looks awesome. I loved it when I, when I was a PlayStation uh, consumer. But for those five brand-new studios, you get all sorts of new first-party games, something that Microsoft has really lacked in. So really looking forward to see what kind of stuff they bring out. Obviously, Playground Games already already PUBG. Um, so want to see kind of what else they're going to do in the future with that. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. Uh, along with that, we saw a little bit of Below, uh, <laughs> some of We Happy Few, and a little bit more cuphead which the crowd really seemed to go crazy for cuphead 
Uh, I think We Happy Few is the most exciting of those for me. How about yourself? Yeah, We Happy Few, we saw that look two years ago, I think. Uh, went out into beta, didn't get a great response uh, just because it was more of that survival aspect. This feels more like what that original trailer kind of laid out. More of that Bioshock, uh, kind of weird alternate world type stuff. That Super excited about that. Um, I, you know, I'll probably get that as a day one purchase for me, I think. Yeah, a lot more story-driven content, it seems Absolutely. like. Yep. Um, and then I think the thing we could close this out with, uh, Black Desert Online. Uh, that seems to be a pretty large announcement. You know, MMOs uh, don't get received super well on console right. usually, but that's a really popular MMO out of Korea. What do you think about that? Yeah, MMO is not something I'm typically engaged in. It looked amazing. Uh, first time I've actually ever seen it. I know that I have some uh, co-workers who actually do play that game. They really seem to enjoy it. I'm usually the kind of guy, give everything a, a chance once, see if I like it. So if I can jump in either on Game Pass, that may be something that I might be able to do. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be here all week uh, filming with a lot of different vendors, uh, filming more of our perspectives on the pressers that happen. We'll probably be filming Bethesda later today. I really hope that you get on YouTube, our Facebook channel, uh, follow us on Twitter, and, and follow Rogue Media Gaming and all the stuff that we're doing out here. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you.